Hey everyone, I'm back, and um, right now in in Garland, I'm in a big, big parking lot with all kinds of little stores around, and some big stores like Tuesday Morning, Dollar Tree, um, the veterinarian that did monster surgery is in this plaza, but uh, I pulled over here to show you these two thrift store finds. I went over to the other side of Garland, right on the edge of Garland and Dallas. And I went to two different thrift stores. I didn't find um, the jerseys I was looking for. This is all that I found. I found a book in each of those thrift stores, but <clears throat> the America's Crochet book was only 99 cents. And the Big Needle Knitting Book was 50 cents. And it's a House of White Birches hardcover book. The knitting one is. And um, I used to belong years ago to the House of White Birches book club for plastic canvas. And I would get these hardcover books like that. Now, I don't knit, but I have friends that do. And so I'm thinking to... Um, put it away and I'll give it to a friend and the America's crochet book I looked through and I don't think that I'll be keeping it um, maybe in the future I could put it up in a giveaway but for the price you know 99 cents I I didn't feel like I could leave it there there may be someone in my channel that would like to have it eventually I'm still gonna of course be doing my 400 subscriber giveaway with the things that I've made to put in that pretty box but I still want to show you those things before I set up how I'm gonna um, draw a name and I'm still just giving my channel a few days you know to see about that um, something I wanted to say I I was on like I said the other side of Garland where I have been before I didn't go into Dallas but it's right on the edge it's not, um, I don't want to say, like, I don't like to say places are run down or places are the slums. It, it wasn't that. It's a, just a place that, it's an area, both areas where these thrift stores were, are areas that you really have to be aware of your surroundings. Um... There's a lot of homeless people, <clears throat> and I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm thirsty, and I guess that's what's on my mind that I want to share. I saw one man, he had his um, cardboard house, I guess you could call it, built right up on the sidewalk, and <clears throat> his grocery cart chained to a um, one of those lights that you pushed across the street and he had all his his things all around him and he was sitting outside of it in the sun and then as i continued to drive i saw a man pushing a cart and a lady very thin lady and and i'm pretty sure she was a short lady was sitting in the cart her legs were hanging out <clears throat> and uh they had a bunch of, he was carrying a bunch of bags on his back and, and she had a little puppy and just a lot of things like that you see in that area. And um, now where I live, my town, it's um, rarely that, that you see that because the police are very strict about that and they, they move them on. So hardly ever see that in my town but where I'm from originally in Massachusetts um, it's a common thing to see and um, I don't know how to say this because some people are not gonna like it and but I can't worry about it I'm, I'm just being transparent you know when we see people that are obviously homeless um they're they're in that situation for all kinds of reasons 
I think we have to be careful to say that every homeless person is that way because they've spent their money on, you know, drugs or riotous living. We don't know. There was a time in my life that I was really close to being homeless and it wasn't because I was out spending money on drugs and things, it was other situations. And um, we just don't know, do we? What has, I mean, unless we're connected to the person, then we would, we would know. But just driving down the street, seeing these people in that situation, we don't know why they're that way. Some people do, I guess, choose to be that way. Um, I knew when I was a teenager, a lady back home that was an RN, she was very successful in her career. And she had a nice little studio apartment. I went to school with her daughter, but she chose to um, appear to be like what they call a bag woman. When she wasn't, she'd push a cart and have bags hanging off it, collecting cans and bottles to return. And she, um, I wouldn't say she dressed sloppy, but it looked like she dressed in layers. Um, because I knew her and her daughter, I knew that she was not homeless, but she came that she came across that way to people in the city that didn't know her. And people would actually throw things at her and and yell out all kinds of ugly things. She just chose to be frivolous. And um, I mean, not to be frivolous. And when she passed away, she only had that one daughter and her daughter inherited her mom's money and you could say was wealthy, but that's just how that lady chose to live. Um, but it wasn't that she was an alcoholic or spending money on drugs or things like that. It was the opposite. She wasn't spending money. <clears throat> so we really don't know. And even since I've been here in Texas, um, there's been a couple of times that I thought, you know, if a tornado came through and, and blew that trailer that I live in, if that tornado blew that trailer away, well, I don't have a place. That's not my trailer. I rent it. So... I, if the tornado took the trailer and didn't take the car, I'd have to learn how to live in the car, I guess. But I'm sure that, you know, God would help me and God would provide something better than the car because he knows how hard that would be on me physically. But if that's all that I had to move into, I'd, I'd have to do it. And yet someone could point their finger at me and accuse me of spending my money the wrong way. There was one time I was stopped by the police. I think it was last year. I didn't know that I had a brake light out. My car has um, a brake light up in the rear view uh, window. And I didn't know that it was out. And the cop stopped me <clears throat> and um, was asking me questions. Well, I, I was having a hard time to get my words out like I do in these videos. That's just part of the Chiari. I have the words in my head. Sometimes it just takes a while for my brain to process the words and for the words to come out. Well, the cop was talking to me. It's not that I was nervous. I, I didn't do anything wrong. But he asked me if I was on, you know, under the influence of anything. He He assumed, and I guess, you know, with his job, he has to be extra cautious like that. But he, he did ask, and I told him no. And I explained about the brainstem disease and how sometimes I have trouble with my words. But you see, a um, situation like that, maybe if he wasn't a police officer, if it was just someone else, maybe in the store that I was talking with and was having a hard time with my words, they may get it in their head Oh, he must be, you know, under the influence of something. And um, so back to these people that are homeless and going through a real struggle. We, we really do not know what brought them there. And um, I drove by him. I didn't stop because 
you know, we also have to have wisdom. I, I can't put myself in a bad situation. Um, but as I drove by and I saw them, I did pray for mercy. It would be a good thing for those of us that do read our Bible to go back maybe today and read those Beatitudes. They're there for a reason, you know, and, and Jesus spoke those. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I want mercy every day. And I drove by them, and I asked God to bless them, protect them, prayed for mercy for them. And I think that's what we, we ought to do. Um, I drove by a parking lot that, uh, can I say, it? it's a parking lot. But it's also a place where people will gather that are looking for work for that day. There's people that will take the chance and stop and by and maybe see in a few of the guys and say, hey, do you do um, concrete work? Do you do carpentry? Do you do painting? And if they do, you know, they'll say, yeah, I do that. And then the person will say, well, I could use you, you know, for so many hours, and this is what I'm willing to pay. Um, I only know this because I know a couple people personally that have gone down there and and hired, you know, a couple men at one time for some work to be done. And thank God that those men did do their job, and then they were able to make pay. Now, why are those men there? And and not already working, we don't know. Some maybe don't have papers to be here. I'm just being honest. Maybe some do, but um, maybe they can't work seven days a week or five days a week for whatever reasons. I, I We don't know. And, um, you know, how I would have loved to have, have offered... Um, hey, here's a crocheted hat or here's a crocheted scarf. But, again, having wisdom, I'm not going to pull over into a parking lot where there's about 20 people that I don't know. <laughs> and and I'm thinking, you know, well, I know that area and, and I know that it's known for these people to gather so people will stop by and offer them a day's work or two days' work. Um... Maybe not everyone that's gathered there is there for that reason. So I don't know. Now, what I do make a, a habit of doing is I usually, and I do right now, have about three or four beanies that I've made. I have made all the time put away. And there's been times that I've been going into Walmart and, and I've seen... Well, this happened recently. I was going into Walmart in the evening. It was cold, damp, and windy. And I saw a man with a little boy. Could have been his son. I don't know. But um, they sure did look cold. And so they had parked not too far from me. And I went into my trunk and I got out a couple of those beanies. And I had caught up with them. And I just offered the, to them. I said, I, I noticed that you looked cold in this wind and this damp weather and, and these beanies, oh, they're so warm and they're handmade and I'd like to just offer them to you if you'd like. And they were so thankful. You know, now, I wouldn't go down to that parking lot by myself and do that. That would be maybe like blood to sharks, <laughs> you know, but I sure can can drive by there and say, well, God, you know why all these people are here and you know what their needs are. And if it's for work, well, send someone by that can trust that these men will do their work for the day so that they can earn some pay and then help them, you know, to find better work, steady work so that they're not standing out here. It's just, uh, it's just how I feel about things. All of you may disagree, all of you may agree. I'm just uh, sharing my thoughts about it, you know. And uh, 
I guess that's it. It was on my mind because I just came from that area. I do have to run into this Dollar Tree to get some um, a certain size Ziploc baggies that are cheaper here than at Walmart. So that's what I'm about to do. But this is what I found at the thrift store. They didn't have, both of those stores did not have any crocheted blankets. In fact, one of them had a sign out say, outside saying they weren't accepting any donations. So I thought, wow, when I go in there, the place is going to be full. But it wasn't. So I don't know if they're cleaning out to shut down or, or what the story is. I don't know. But I hope you can understand what I'm trying to share. So... Trying to think if there was anything else. I didn't make it to Tractor Supply yet because I'll go to the Tractor Supply that's in my town. I live maybe 15 minutes from right here, so it's not too bad. But it's turned out to be a beautiful sunny day. And remember this, I'm reminded right now of a scripture. Um, it said that Jesus, he was moved with compassion when he was walking this earth and moving through those crowds. Can you imagine? They were crowds and crowds. People piled up on one another and all kinds of people, all kinds of sicknesses. There was leprosy back then. There's still leprosy in some parts of the world, but uh, back then it was really bad. Leprosy, people that were possessed, um, people that were crippled that had to be carried on those little stretcher type things, all, all kinds of situations, you know? And Jesus, being God in the flesh, walked this earth, walked among those people, walked through those crowds, but it says that he was moved with compassion. God help me, I'm talking about me, God help me to, to be filled with compassion and yet have wisdom, have discernment, you know, um, but just, I want to be more compassionate. I love people. I love all people. And that's just uh, my desire. So anyway, I didn't mean to go to preaching because like I've said before, I'm not called to preach. But I have been a Sunday school teacher for a long, long time. I guess over 30 years. Or close to I think over and I've taught all ages so I have a lot of the Word of God down in me and and sometimes it just comes up like that <laughs> but hey the Word of God is what's kept me it has kept me on the straight and narrow and um, I'm just so thankful so thankful and I'm so thankful that so many of you put up with me on my little YouTube channel I don't have it narrowed down to just one thing like crocheting or like yarn or, or chickens. I'm all over the place. But I'm trying to do my best and I enjoy meeting new people and connecting with different ones through the YouTube and um, thank God for it. So have a great rest of your day. I'm heading in that store to get just what I need which is that certain size Ziploc baggie. And I think a drink of water. And uh, remember, please, be kind to everybody because somebody is having a bad day. When you think of that, it's just so true. All right, everyone. Bye.